الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في كتابه المجيد والفرقانه الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والقواعد من النساء التي لا يرجون نكاحا فليس عليهن جناح أن يضعن ثيابهن غير متبرجات بزينة وأن يستعففن خير لهن والله سميع عليم وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام المرأة عورة فإنها إذا خرجت من بيتها استشرفها الشيطان وإنها لا تكون أقرب إلى الله تعالى منها في قعر بيتها أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honorable scholars, respected brothers and elders, in everything of life we see there's the original and the fake, the superior and the inferior, the branded and the generic. If I may use the same phrase and the same metaphor, Allah has also referred to certain believers as the genuine believers, as the original believers, as the superior believers. مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا عَاهَدُوا اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرُ Allah says, amongst my servants are those that are genuine, they are original, they belong to the exclusive category. They honor the pledge that they make with me. This verse was revealed regarding the general Sahaba. And amongst the Sahaba, there was an opinion that it was the likes of Mus'ab ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, a youth who had uh, devoted his youth towards the obedience of Allah. They felt that he, he you know, the, the profile of Mus'ab radiallahu anhu was in accordance to the description of this verse. So that is the original believer, the genuine believer, Allah make us amongst them. But then Allah also cautions us and warns us, you know, people will tell you there's a lot of piracy on the market. Be careful. This is a sign, buy a genuine, the, the, the genuine logo, the original. Allah says there are those also. قَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا some villagers came to the Prophet وسلم, and they accepted Islam verbally and they came to impress upon him that listen we are genuine believers uh, I think we also deserve zakat, give us some zakat They trying to show you that as if they are favoring you by accepting Islam So Allah says no 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 tell them you can't claim to be original You know what? If a person comes and sells you an original chain and he says it's 200, either it's stolen or it's not genuine. You know that that's basic knowledge. قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا Tell them you're not a genuine believer. وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا You can claim that you've read the kalima. It is the height of foolishness if someone considers enrollment to be graduation. You and I have enrolled in the institution of Islam, we far from graduation. Yes, enrollment provides you the potential of graduation, but we far from graduation. So the recitation and the articulation of the kalima, this is we've enrolled into Islam. He's enrolled into the institution, this is not the graduation. What is the sign of an original believer, of a genuine believer who carries the original logo? فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allah says, I swear by my own might and my grandeur. Tell them their faith is not the original, it is not the genuine. Until and unless they consider you as the judge in all their matters. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say unto them, I swear by my grandeur their faith is not the original until they consider you as the judge in all their matters. Then, ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتِ They must not experience any reservation or reluctancy or heavy-heartedness or unwillingness or skepticism towards your decree and your what you decide. So they're going to accept you as the judge and it must not be accepted reluctantly, not heavy hearted. These are the, I'm not, I'm not giving a commentary, I'm giving the exact translation. They mustn't feel burdened over what, okay, we'll take it because we have to. No, no, it must be from within. And in essence, they must submit to you in totality, then they carry the original logo. Otherwise, it's piracy on the markets. Wa yusallimu taslima. They must submit to you in totality. Now, you will find today many of us have with the grace of Allah recited the kalima. But I'm afraid 
Every person holds, or generally speaking, has reservation in his heart regarding certain injunctions of Islam. So there are certain people that either will say it's subtle or explicit, but you know what, this issue of interest, me, I can't digest it. Look here, it's a command of Allah. But for me, I, I can't really relate to the theory. Why? Why? Why is this forbidden? For others, I fail to see the, the equality in the distribution of the estate. What's the wisdom? What's the legalities? What's the, uh, what's, what's the logic behind these rulings? Some would say, I frown on the veil, but why? why? Why the hijab? I think this is holding our woman back, and hence there's a crusade against the hijab. My brother, honestly speaking, as long as in your heart you got reservation, and you don't willfully, happily accept the commandments of Allah, trust me, Iman has not yet entered the recesses of your heart. If I'm crude, forgive my terminology, but I know no difference. Uthman ibn Mad'un said, I accepted Islam. The Prophet ﷺ told me I accepted, but I didn't really consider my first acceptance as my original acceptance, simply because I read the kalima, but my heart still had reservation regarding Islam. Then I heard this verse, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَا إِذِنْ قُرْبَى Like I've told you previously, when, you, you, when, when we hear this verse, all we say, the time to get up, the khutbah is over now, salah is about to commence. He says, when I heard this verse, all my reservations and my doubts were cleared. Now I consider this the actual point of me embracing the faith. This was the actual point because all the doubts were cleared. I spoke about Mulana Rashid Rahmatullah Ali, when he sat in the company of his spiritual mentor, he said, I attained three things. Number one, all the doubts that were in my heart were cleared. Number two, Islam became my nature. He says, it's your nature to eat, sleep, drink without that you're uneasy. Obeying Allah became my nature. And the third thing, uh, the praise or the criticism of anyone did not affect me positively or negatively. So Allah says in the 22nd Jews in Surah Ahzab, and that's my topic on hijab. Many people, unfortunately, they frown with this. They're uncomfortable. Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ It does not befit the profile of a believer. It's not in accordance with the nature and the temperament of a believer that when he or she is told that this is the decree, the desire, the command of Allah, that they ask for option in the matter. That's not a believer that he says, I got to rethink the matter. Let me sleep over the matter. No, no. And what was, look at the background of this verse. A woman by the name of Zainab bint Jahash radiallahu anha, belonging to a very high social standing. The Prophet sallallahu intended wedding her to Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anhu, who was also a very noble companion, but had a stain of slavery in his life had a stain and a twinge of slavery. So there was perhaps a, de a degree of incompatibility in the lineage of both. She was a bit uncomfortable with this choice. And so was her brother. Allah revealed these verses. When the Prophet of Allah has said this is his intention, you should not ask for choice in the matter. Immediately she gave up her own choice and she accepted the suggestion of the Prophet ﷺ and her nikah was made. So what I'm saying is the sign of an original believer if you study Quran and Hadith, then you will safely sign, you will safely say that any person who accepts Islam, if true Iman has entered into him or her, then modesty will become a common feature in their life. Until modesty does not become part of our lives, I'm afraid we have not yet entered into the arena of the true Islam. Again, it's a deception. I mean, a few years ago there was a conference and then you see the spokesmen that are speaking there and the spokeswoman, the correct Islam, the moderate Islam. Now you can imagine what will be said there, you know, to undo this, uh, the negative propaganda created by the media. Our culture, and I'm not talking of an Indian culture or Malay culture or an Arab culture, this again is a sad reality. If a person enters into our masjid, he's going to be exposed to an Indian culture. Take him to perhaps Cape Town, he'll get a Malay culture. Take him to the Middle East, he'll get an Arab culture. It's time we revive our identity as a Muslim culture. Our culture has two things, Islamic culture, modesty and simplicity. And the other cultures have two things, immorality and extravagance. That's the long and short of our faith. Anything we do, we do it simple and we do it with morals. We, we, that, that, that is the way we define. So morality has to become common. And when I'm speaking of morality, you know, I believe that the hijab of a woman and the veiling of a woman, 
I mean, Allah has commanded her to veil herself because of the nasty glance of a man. So in essence, the laws of veiling are more strict on her, but the, the, the command of controlling your gaze is more strict on the man. We've got to understand it into perspective. Otherwise, we understand our weakness. You know, on a lighter note, someone, you see, is laughing already. Someone sent me a nice SMS. Well, I don't know if it's nice, but anyway, brothers, in the house of Allah, let's respect the... They say, you know, the three desires of a man. The three desires of a man. The first is, he wish he was as handsome as his mother thinks. He wish he was as handsome as his mother thinks. You know, every woman, you know, my four sons, eh, Alhamdulillah, my sons are all better looking than my daughter-in-law. And not nice to say, even my daughter, she's better than my son-in-law. I mean, Allah shukr. So he wishes he was as handsome as his mother thinks, as rich as his child believes. You know, my Abba got a lot of money, man. My Abba, he's got a lot of money. You see, little money, you can buy me a four-wheeler with that, man. And the best one is the third one. He wish he had as many women as his wife suspects. <laughs> Stop for Allah. So what I'm saying is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to lower your gaze. Now, I, this Allah put in my heart. I haven't read it. I haven't heard it. I haven't studied it. In kana sawaban fa min Allah. Wa in kana khata'an fa minni wa min ash-shaytan. Wallahu wa rasooluhu minhu bari'an. If it is correct, it is from Allah and His Nabi, and if it is incorrect, it is from me and the devil and Allah and His Nabi have nothing to do with this. I was one day giving a talk to ladies about hijab and Allah put this in my mind. I believe in my humble opinion that the woman screening and veiling herself, there are two angles to it, and if I may liken it to something, I would liken it to a man donning the ihram. When a male puts on the ihram, there is a garment of ihram and there is a condition of ihram. If a person comes into the garment of ihram, so he puts on the two pieces of cloth, but then he violates the ihram, he shaves his head, he consummates with his wife, then he is in the physical garb, but he is defeated, he is out of ihram. Why? Because ihram has a condition. At the very same time, if the physical cloth falls out, he's not, he's not out of the state of ihram, because ihram is a condition. Ihram is a condition. For those who view it the other way, that yes, I just have to be modest, I don't have to veil myself, I don't have to cover myself, that is also a deception, because if I avoid all the prohibitions of ihram, I do not apply scented clothes, I do not consummate with my wife, I do not shave my hair, but until I don't remove the common clothing and don't don the ihram, I'm still not in the condition of ihram. So really my sister, while you have covered your face, this is not what hijab entails, but this is part of hijab. This is the garment of hijab, this is not the condition of hijab. Hijab is modesty in your gaze. So if you veiled yourself, and you've covered yourself, but your gaze is roaming through your hijab, then I'm afraid you like a man that is in, in ihram, but he's shaving his hair. So he has the garment of ihram, but not the condition of ihram. Again, I say, I have not read this. If it is correct, it is from Allah. We have to understand categorically, hijab and modesty is the trait of a believer. There were seven women who were the slaves of Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul. He had compelled them on prostitution. The Quran speaks about this categorically in Surah Nur. But once they accepted Islam, they became uncomfortable immediately. As soon as a woman is going to change, modesty is going to become common in her. So they came to Abdullah and they said that, you know what, he was a munafiq, we are not going to go and throw ourselves out as prostitutes. You know, it, it just doesn't now uh, agree with our faith. And he compelled them, and that is what we see in the world. While we are made to believe that veiling that woman is denying her her privilege, but on the other hand, look at the extreme of putting her as, as, a, as an article of, of attraction, making her, putting her onto prostitution. Is this not the pinnacle of exploitation? And then woman porn, children porn, and child trafficking. One side you got 10 men, every 10 minutes there's a rape, every 5 minutes there's an incest. These are the, the statistics of your Western democracy and liberation, and you expect the world to digest this. Anyway, these women came to Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salud and they said, no, we will not make zina anymore. Uh, and he compelled them, Allah then revealed the verses, وَلَا تُكْرِهُ فَتَيَاتِكُمْ عَلَى الْبِغَاءِ إِنْ أَرَدْنَ تَحَسُّنًا لِتَبْتَغُوا عَرَضَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا You should die with shame. How can you compel a chaste moral woman who refuses on the grounds of her integrity to engage in such a mean, such a, I don't know, you can't call it a work, I don't know, what do you call it? Uh, whatever it is, uh, do not compel them. In fact, the tafasir have also recorded their names. In Madarikut Tanzil, the names are mentioned. The names were basically Mu'adha, 
Masika, Umayma, Amra, Arwa, and Qatila. These were the six girls. I mean, we need we know all the other people's name, all the celebrities. These were six girls that insisted on morality and they said, Come with me, our life will go. We will never commit this act. So this is modesty. As Muslims, we believe that the clothing we wear, the garments we wear, has two benefits. Why do we why do we adorn ourselves? Why do we cover ourselves? For two reasons. Alhamdulillah Ladi Kasani Ma Uwari Bihi Aurati wa atajamadu bihi fi hayati. What is the dua? All praise belongs to Allah who has provided me garment that I conceal my private organs and I derive beauty in my life. So these are the two benefits of, of, of garments as the Quran says. In fact, Allah makes mention, قَدْ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسَيْ يُوَارِي سَوْآتِكُمْ وَرِيشًا Oh man, we've provided you with clothing, conceal your organs, and derive pleasure out of it. It's beauty as well. وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٍ And the garment of piety, that is the noblest. Then Allah goes on to say, now, I don't think that's the common reason. That's the common reason of, of dressing today. I mean, now with summer coming in again, you can imagine the nudity that's going to splash out in the world. For them, it is absolute adornment. In fact, I, I, in my understanding, there's two aims. There's one aim on the Muslim or one, one attack on the Muslim woman uh, to take her out of morality and to make her immoral. To make her immoral. That is the one aim. Get her out of that veil and that why? Because they're not accepting our liberal democracy. They're not blending into our society. They're keeping themselves aloof from our culture. So get them intermingled and blended into our society. That's the first aim. And the second aim, I don't know if I understand it correctly, is to make the woman like men and the men like women. Everything is unisex. I mean, earlier this year, trust me, we were flying back from uh, Paris. Myself and my wife was with me. So anyway, we boarded the flight. We were given two seat allocations, the middle seat and the aisle seat. Now, obviously, we said we'll go in. If the person, you know, at the window is a male, I will sit next to him. And if it's a female, my wife will sit. But we boarded the flight, we got on, we get there. Now, we don't know if it's a he or a she. <laughs> no, no, my wife, I didn't know if she's listening. But I'm telling you, we're standing there. Now you know what you converse in Arabic and you dress like this in a plane, it's dangerous. <laughs> now um, we're really debating the people behind you. We, you know, now we're switching now. What is this? Is he or she? Wallah, I'm saying this in the house of Allah. And then the better of her told her, no, it's a woman. She turned out to be correct, my wife was. But this is the dilemma. So this is the aim of the world. Allah tells us and reminds us, Ya Bani Adam, لا يفتننكم الشيطان كما أخرج أبويكم من الجنة Oh, the children of Adam, don't forget the devil influenced your parents. And he caused them to be expelled from paradise. Because of which their clothing was taken off, hence their private organs were exposed. Don't fall in his trap that he makes you immoral. Then Allah speaks of the pagan Arab when they made tawaf of the Kaaba, circumambulation in nudity. وَإِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَا قَالُوا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهَا آبَاءَنَا وَاللَّهُ أَمَرَنَا بِهَا Where did you learn this from this nudity? No, Allah commanded us to do this here. Because we disobeyed Allah in this clothing. I mean, look at the shallow logic. Then keep a clean outfit. If the whole wisdom is that I can't make tawaf in these dirty clothes, in these contaminated clothes, then keep an exclusive. But no, no. The idea of the devil is become immoral. In nudity they made tawaf. So Allah revealed, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَى Allah never ever commands immorality. Allah never ever advocates immorality. In fact, Allah speaks about that aged woman in the Quran. وَالْقَوَاعِدُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ اللَّاتِ لَا يَرْجُونَ نِكَاحًا Allah says that aged woman who has no inclination to marriage because of her old age. فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِنَّ جُنَاحٌ أَنْ يَضَعْنَ ثِيَابَهُنَّ غَيْرَ مُتَبَرِّجَاتٍ بِزِينَةٍ It would not be wrong on her to remove excess clothing and it would be correct for her. She does not have to adopt the stringent measures of veiling herself, covering her hands, her feet, her entire face. وَأَنْ يَسْتَعْفِفْنَ خَيْرُ اللَّهُنْ So, she's been provided with a concession. That because of her old age and she spots the, the period that perhaps men would incline or she would incline, there is flexibility. She's got to cover her hair, but her face does, there is flexibility in it being uh, unveiled. However, Allah goes on to say, if she chooses to cover her face and cover her hands and cover her entire body, then this is better for her. This is better. You know, in Arabic they say, لِكُلِّ سَاقِطَةٍ لَا قِطَةٌ There's always someone to pick up what you throw. She might be old, you might shun her, but Baji is around, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, لِكُلِّ سَاقِطَةٍ لَا قِطَةٌ You don't know from where, who is seen, that's the same. So, Islam says that even if she ages, if this is the command of Allah for an aging woman, 
for an aging woman that has passed the modesty, then the garment and the dressing of a woman, the Prophet ﷺ says, when they exit from their house, what should be the fragrance of a woman and what should be the fragrance of a man? Nabi ﷺ said, Tibur Rijal, ma zahara rihuhu wa khafiya launuhu. The fragrance of a man is that the color must be hidden, the fragrance must be apparent. On the other hand, the scent of a woman must be that the color is apparent, but the fragrance must be totally subdued and suppressed. In fact, he said if a woman exits with a strong fragrance, you know, they talk of aromatherapy nowadays. With a strong fragrance coming out, the Prophet ﷺ has used the words adulterous on her. Because this is what the Quran said. Let me quote the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Al mar'atu awra. He said the entire body of a woman is something that needs to be concealed. The first words. When she exits from her house, the devil pounces on her. And he makes her attractive to the entire world. And there is no location on planet earth where she can enjoy more closeness to her creator than the confines of her house. Now those that wish to chant the slogans on the Muslim front of liberating women, this is what the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says. Hence the Quran says, Ya Nisa al Nabiyya, lastunna ka ahadim min al Nisa. Oh, the consorts of Muhammad ﷺ understand your privilege. You are not like ordinary women. Any taqaytunna fiya Allah, fala taqdaqna bil qawl. Do not sweeten your voice when you speak to strange men. Today you find the commercial world has made every limb of that woman's body into an object of business and trade. Forgive me, but what you see, I mean, you just touch any newspaper and then you see the seductive voice of a woman is used to entertain telesales, making money out of the voice of a woman. In fact, we've learned in our teachings that if a woman is part of the congregation, if a woman is, I mean, one other point to mention, there's consensus on the scholars that the adhan of a woman is haram. It is makru et tahrimi. I mean, if she calls out adhan, everybody will come, but not for namaz. They'll come for the wrong reasons. The adhan of a woman is forbidden. If a woman is in the congregation and the imam makes a mistake, a man will say, Allahu Akbar. At takbiru lil rijal wa tasfiqu lil nisa. A woman will not, will not say, Allahu Akbar. Because her voice, the Imam will make more mistakes. Uh, the sweetness, she will tap her hand gently. This is what she will do. This is how Islam has concealed her voice. Allah said, Fala taqba'na bil qawl. Don't sweeten your voice. Don't sweeten your voice. I mean, yesterday I had two sisters that called me and cried on the phone. And I say this to men. Again, our, our, our point. While Allah says it to them, but we've got to learn equally. You know, this woman cried. In fact, I even made my wife here. I even made my wife here. She heard the, the, the pain of this woman. She says, you know, my husband is so abrupt to me, so raw to me. But when you see him speaking to a strange woman, you will swear this is the perfect man you are looking for. This is a perfect husband. Kind to all, sweet to all, polite to all, tender to everyone, sympathetic to others. But when you see him, in the, he's the most horrible human in my house. But when you see him outside to other women, how sympathetic he is, you'll swear this is the perfect human you are looking for. And you know, every time I hear this, I, I consider this as a reminder from Allah to me that am I polite enough to my own wife? Ask yourself, my brother, take it to heart. Automatically we tone down, we tone down. When we speak to strange women, we tone down. فَلَا تَخْضَعْنَ بِالْقَوْلِ Allah says, the one who's got lust in his heart, he will be attracted. And stay indoors. Now the woman today, you tell him, you say, what must I do at home? Allah tells you, listen. Don't go and splash your beauty and don't go and make yourself an article of attraction like the pagan woman did. My sister, you're not so cheap. You're not so mean that you go and throw yourself around for men to cast a glance on you. My Nabi said, cursed is that male who casts a nasty glance on a strange woman. And cursed is that woman who presents herself at locations where strange men walk. So my brother, you want blessings in your marriage. And then you make the stage while you segregate men and women. But the stage is ideal for all to see. You locate them that curses can come. Then you want barakat. And my brother, you ask today, I'm looking for a woman, but I don't want a veiled woman. And I don't want a woman in hijab. Then you are really starting a foundation that is never going to develop. 
وقرن في بيوت كنا سين دوز ولا تبرج نتبرج الجاهلية الأولى don't go splash yourself outside وأقمنا الصلاة perform صلاة وأتينا الزكاة دستات زكاة وأطيعنا الله ورسوله obey Allah in his name this is what you must do يا أيها النبي يقول لأزواجك وبناتك ونساء المؤمنين أو نبي tell your wives tell your daughters and make it a general command to all Muslim women يدنين عليهن من جلابي بهن Tell them to cover their faces. The quotation of Ibn Abbas in Ibn Kathir. He said, Amar Allah, Nisa al-Mu'minina, Iza kharajna min buyutihinna fi haja, An yughattina wujuhahunna, Min fawqi ru'usihinna bil jalabib, Wa yubdina aynan wahida. Allah has commanded that woman, That cover your entire body, Cover your entire face, Wa la yubdina zinatahunna illa ma zahara minha, وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا لِبُعُولَتِهِمْ The pagan Arab had the habit of keeping the scarf dangling on the shoulders and the upper portion of her chest was exposed which obviously defeated the essence of covering yourself. I mean a lot of women they, they, they passionately wear snappery scarves or it's dangling around their shoulders or it's transparent. Then that is defeating the essence of hijab. That is defeating the essence of hijab. Brothers, just bear out with me. I, I need to mention some important things and inshallah I will try and round up. The Prophet ﷺ is sitting with his honorable companions. One woman by the name of Asma radiallahu anha comes. She says, Ya Rasulullah, I need to speak to you. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Go for it, O my sister. Inni Rasulum, the Ibn Abdul Bar makes mention of it in his Kitab al Isti'ab. Inni Rasulum min warai min jama'ati nisa'il muslimin. I have been sent by a delegation of women. Kulluhunna yakulna bi qawli wa ala mithli ra'yi. They all echo my sentiments and they all believe in what I have said. I have just been nominated to represent them. In Allah Ta'ala ba'athaka ila al-rijali wa al-nisa. Allah has sent you to both the men and the women. Fa'amanna bika wa saddaqnaak. We brought iman on you and we trust what you say. Then she goes on to say, wa inna Allah Ta'ala fuddila wa inna al-rijal wa inna al-rijal fuddilu bil jumu'at. وَشُهُودِ الْجَنَائِزِ وَشُهُودِ الْجَنَائِزِ وَالْجِهَادِ Allah has privileged the men. She didn't say Allah has privileged them by going out to work. Allah has privileged them with the Jummah prayer because that is a privilege. Really my sister going out to work is not a privilege. I mean ask the men that you know, the other day one brother was saying, he said you know we have to contend with so many things in the traffic, in the commercial world and now we got one other thing on the roads, cash in transit I used to contend with also. So, you know, it's, it's not a polite world, it's a vicious world. It's, 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 it's a, you have to go, that is why you exit in. So she goes on to say, وَإِنَّ الرِّجَالِ فُضِّلُوا بِالْجُمُعَاتِ They have been privileged, they have been privileged with, with going out, uh, you know, for, for Jummah Salah. وَشُهُودِ الْجَنَائِزِ And attending janazas, jihad And striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And furthermore, وَإِذَا خَرَجُوا لِلْجِهَادِ حَفِذْنَا لَهُمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ وَرَبَّيْنَا أَوْلَادَهُمْ When they go out in the path of Allah, we look after them and we nurture their children. وَنَحْنُ مَعْشَرَ النِّسَى And we the group of women, مَقْصُورَات We are, we are secured in our pavilions. مُخَدَّرَات We stay indoors. مَوَاضِعُ شَهْوَاتِ الرِّجَالِ We make ourselves available to our men whenever they have a need to approach us. حَامِلَاتُ أَوْلَادِهِمْ We bear their children patiently. أَفَنُشَارِكُهُمْ فِي الْأَجْرِ I only have one question, do we have any reward of what they do? Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam said, before I answer, فَالْتَفَتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِوَجْهِهِ إِلَىٰ أَصْحَابِ He turned his attention to all his companions. He said, سَمِعْتُمْ مَقَالَةَ إِمْرَأَةٍ أَحْسَنَ سُؤَالًا عَنْ دِينِهَا مِنْ هَذِهِ Before I answer, you tell me my sahaba, have you heard a more brilliant question asked by a more intelligent woman? They said, no, O Nabi of Allah, this is the most intelligent woman we've ever heard. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In sarifi ya asma, O asma, you may go back. Wa'alami man wara'aki. And convey my sentiments to the women that have deputed you. Tell them that if you will diligently do what you said that you carry out, يَعْدِلُ كُلَّ مَا ذَكَرْتِ لِلْرِجَالِ They will be out participating in the challenges. You will be sitting at home with the same rewards. Work from home, work smart. I mean, what do those other things? This is working from home. Working from home and make your own money. This is working from home, my sister. Sit at home, diligently see to your husband and 
the Prophet sallallahu فانصرفت أسماه وهي تهلل وتكبر استبشارا بما قال لها الرسول. She started jumping with joy. She started saying Allahu Akbar. She says we've got it so easy. Everything is done for us. Next hadith. The riwayat is in Abu Dawood. Sabit ibn Qais ibn Shammas says, جاءت امرأة إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقال لها أم خلاد. A woman by the name of Umm Khalad came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She came after we returned from a battle. Her son was martyred in the battle. She came completely veiled. So she said, "Where's the Prophet of Allah? I need to know about my son." I mean, you know, our women have to go to the theater, or they go to the school, or the children back from soccer, or they back from cricket, or they back from excursion. These were women that came to the Prophet of Allah after the battle was over. When Umm Haritha came, she said, "Oh, Prophet of Allah, I know my son has passed away. I only want to know if he's in paradise. I rejoice. If he's in hell, I cry." Nabi Ali Salam said, Ya Umm Haritha, inna hal jinan, wa inna ibnaki asab al firdaus al ala. Consolation. Let me start off by saying it's not one paradise, there are many. For the record, your son enjoys the best. This woman came veiled. One Sahabi said, Jaiti tas alina an ibnaki wa anti mutanakiba. You come to us about your son, you're in so much pain, you veiled you. Now, we believe in modesty in the hearts of tragedies also. Now there is a death in the family, so now you embracing her, you feel you giving a shoulder to lean on, or you taking a shoulder to rest on. I don't know what you're doing. No, no, you know what, my sister, she's going through. No, no, in the heart of pain also, she's lost the son, but she's a ghair mahram. You cannot speak to her. So the Sahabi said, "Oh my sister, you've lost your son. You're in so much pain, yet you veil yourself so adequately, and you men- then when we do it, then it's extremism." This is the hadith of Abu Dawood. What were the words of this woman? If only my sister can make her a role model. She said, my brother, I've lost my son. I don't need to lose my modesty. I've lost my son. I don't need. The janaza of my son has left. Today, the janaza of modesty has left our homes. And I've told you this, my brother, and I say it again. The Prophet of Allah said, he will not enter Jannah. Who, O Nabi of Allah, who is comfortable that his wife and his daughter speak to strange men. That's your duty, my brother. While you take care of your gaze, you have to be possessive over your wife. This is possessive nature that Islam encourages. But unfortunately, we possessive over the car, we possessive over these other things. Another thing I mentioned, and I will round up with this here. The woman used to come to pledge to the Prophet ﷺ. Allah speaks about the allegiance they made. Once they used to make their allegiance, Aisha said, فَمَنْ أَقَرَّتْ بِهَذِهِ الشَّرْ When they used to pledge, the Prophet ﷺ said, قَدْ بَايَعْتُكِ كَلَامًا I have verbally accepted your allegiance. And Aisha رضي الله عنه said, مَا مَسَّتْ يَدُهُ يَدَمْ رَأَةٍ قَدْتُ The Prophet ﷺ's hand never ever touched the palm of a strange woman in his whole life. The riwayat of Muatta Imam Malik, he categorically said, إِنِّي لَا أُصَافِحُ النِّسَى I don't shake hands with strange women. There was a young boy in the corporate world who one day came. He said, Mullah, I share this with you, conveyed. He says, one day I went and I had to work. Now, you know, interviews and working, it's very difficult. He says, every time before I go into these interviews, I make dua to Allah, I perform two rakat salah. And as a gesture, he says, what I do is I tie my hands behind my back. So that already puts that woman uncomfortable. You know what, if, if you're standing like this here, then you're waiting. You know, obviously, you have your hands like this here. Now she's waiting to shake you with two hands. But if I put my hands at the back and I take a step back, then my very gesture is showing, you know what, my, 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 my beliefs are, my, my system is, my, my values are, that I don't shake hands. I don't shake hands. And, and I'm, I, I don't consider or I don't take to heart uh, the, the ill feelings. I mean, either you hurt the feelings of Allah or this woman. The choice is yours. Either this woman or Allah, you've got to make a call. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Inni la usafihu nisa. I do not shake hands with any woman. We make dua to the Almighty Allah that He bring hijab in our homes. He bring modesty into our lives. Because that is, the, that is the quality of a believer. And let me ask my sister and conclude by saying, Kama ta'ishun tamutun. Wa kama tamutun tuhsharun. Oh my sister, how you will live, that is how you will die. And how you will die, that is how you will stand up. While you are desirous of a good death, and I'm equally enviable of a good death, but reality is I don't know where death will find me, and I don't know where death will find you. I'm sure you will echo the sentiments with me, you don't want to be pulled out of a car by the jaws of life where your body is semi-nude. I'm sure you will agree with me, you don't want to die tragically where your hair is uncovered. We've heard in, in times that we are living, there's been catastrophes across the globe. It has been the beard that has been the grounds of identifying people as Muslims, which have privileged them with a ghusl, a kafan, and a janaza. This is what people told me in Indonesia one-on-one in the tsunami areas. That because of the beard we identified. 
My sister, I don't know where death will find you. But this much is certain, فَلَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٌ So rather you be dressed in the correct way, and veil yourself, and cover yourself, and adorn yourself. Perhaps that be the only identity of a Muslim woman, which privileges you with that ghusl, enables you with that kafan, and that you die a noble death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability in every aspect and facet of our life, we become haya, and we develop this modesty. I make an appeal to every sister listening, those that do not don the scarf, this is your opportunity, oh my sister, cover your hair. Cover your hair. Those whom Allah has privileged with the ability of covering your hair, take it a step forward, cover your face. Comments will come and go. People will make remarks. There will be a crusade against hijab. But see those that have reverted to Islam, they have seen the beauty. You know, I end with one thing. One great person was traveling. So someone frowned on him and said, what's wrong with you people? You cover your woman. So he said, no, no problem. This man, we will give him nice answer. It's extremely hot. They traveling. Now he opens up a can of coke. So when he opens up the can of coke, he tells the man, how's it? Don't you feel faith? He says, yeah, obviously, I mean, it's juicy, it's cold, it's ice. Obey your thirst, Sprite. What do they say? I'm not advertising for anyone. Huh? It looks beautiful. He says, exactly. You know, in Gujarati, they say, join a mantai. You see, then you like it. In the same way, my brother, if you're going to splash your woman out, other people are going to look at her and going to desire. Since this woman has come in the commercial world, see the stats of how many marriages have broken up. Uh, see how many. Some are so loose, their smile is deliberate to jeopardize your marriage. Their smile is deliberate. They know you're weak and they know I'm weak. That is our weakness. One smile and we will fall. One smile and we'll collapse. She's got a crisis in her marriage. She wants a crisis in your marriage also. So that is why we keep them with honor and dignity. Everything we keep that we hold with honor, we preserve them. Bring your sisters into hijab. Bring your mothers into veil. Wallah, that is the only thing that will restore the glory of the summa. Allah grant us the understanding. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillah.